Hi, I'm Jim W6LG, your YouTube Elmer. Welcome to my radio room here in Rockland, California. A few months ago, I mentioned an article in the ARL publication On the Air or OTA, a neat magazine, and it has some very interesting articles. One of them caught my attention, and what I'd like to do after I read a couple of sentences from that article is do a test to demonstrate what happens as losses in the cable increase? What happens to the SWR? Let's first look at that article and um, I'll quickly read a couple of sentences right off the top. I think it's about four. When you attach a coax cable connector to an antenna socket or any other coaxial fitting, it seems very secure. The connection is secure mechanically, but when it comes to water intrusion, it is a very different story. No matter how solidly connected your cable seems to be, that connection is no match for water. Because of a process known as capillary action, water will eventually seep into the connection. When it does, it will slowly ruin the cable. As the cable fails, you'll eventually notice that the SWR, standing wave ratio, seems to be rising. As it does, RF energy loss in your cable will increase. It says, no matter how solidly connected your cable seems to be, I think what they mean is, no matter how the connector seems to be, that connection is no match for water. Well, maybe, maybe not. Because of a process known as capillary action, water will eventually seep into the connection. I don't agree with that, because you can seal a connection and make it watertight. When water does leak in, it will slowly ruin the cable. Well, that part's true. As the cable fails, you'll eventually notice that the SWR seems to be rising. I don't know what they mean by you'll finally notice or you'll eventually notice that it seems to be rising. It, it's either rising or it's not. Uh, so if it is rising, uh, as it does, RF losses in your cable will increase. That part is true, but the premise is not true. For purposes of looking at what's going on here, I'm, I'm going to have two sets of cable. One is gray, one is black. Um, one has about twice the loss of the other. At the far end, I'm going to create a standing wave ratio that will be in the range of 2 to 1, 3 to 1. Uh, I might even make it 4 to 1. And then we'll measure that SWR at the beginning of the cable. And we'll do that. Um, I won't be able to use my rig expert. It's on loan, but I'll, I'll use a, a, a nano VNA. And we'll look at the results and see if what's in that article is correct. Or does it make some misstatements? And Anyway, let's, let's do that test. Again, one cable is gray. One cable is black. I'm not going to tell you which is which until we get to the end. Um, but I think you'll figure it out. So here we go. Let's uh, hook up the nano VNA. I'll put um, a resistor at the far end, something like a 200 ohm resistor, and we'll see what the SWR looks like. And I may do that at uh, 6 meters to create a, a greater loss in the cable. So here we go. Uh, I'm going to switch over to. Um, uh, cameras. Uh, uh, I'm going to switch over to a display screen. So here we go. Okay, connect to device, and I have calibrated it um, just to make certain. Let's do a quick check of it. Okay, I'm connecting um, a high quality 50 ohm load. Um, and let's sweep it and see. And let's sweep at, uh, uh, I don't know, 
50 megahertz to 51 megahertz just to get the range down and sweep. Okay, so uh, this is showing 50 ohms, 50 ohms, 50 ohms. So let's uh, uh, let's um, hook up the coax, and I'll do that right now. Okay, so per for purposes of um, discussion, this is the gray cable, and I've hooked up a 200 ohm load, and we're at 50 megahertz. So let's sweep it and see what it looks like. Okay, it's showing an SWR of about, uh, let's just round numbers, about two and a half to one, sorta. And let's see what it says for the length of the cable. Now, I'm not going to show you the real cable. <laughs> uh, all right, it says it's uh, 71 feet. All right, let's do cable number two. And I'll move the um, uh, 200 ohm load from the gray to the black cable. And this is the black cable. Now I'm going to set the um, current cable as a reference. So I'm going to set that as a reference. And then we're going to sweep again. Okay. Now. This is, although I couldn't do it in black, I suppose I could if I changed stuff around. This is the black cable, and this is the gray cable. The SWR on the black cable is uh, a little over three to one. And on the gray cable, it's two and a half to one. Let's look at the length. Uh, this one's a little bit longer but not not by much okay so which of these two is the better cable this one has a three to one SWR this one has about a two and a half to one SWR which is better which is better okay now let's let's have the uh, this device tell us so down here it um, says that the Minimum VSWR is about 3 to 1 at 50 megahertz. Return loss 5.922. Divide that in half, about 3 dB, so about half power loss. And this is the cable that I just used. Let's go back to the first cable. He said. <laughs> and. Um, see what it says. So again, this has about, yeah, round numbers, about 3 dB loss. Okay, I've got the gray cable connected, and let's sweep it. We know that the SWR is going to be about 2.5 to 1, but what is the return loss? So let's sweep it. Okay, the return loss is round numbers about 8 dB. So divide that in half about 4 dB. This is the gray cable. Even the used one um, tested as being pretty good. And what I did was, uh, uh, how that happened, a friend of mine from uh, Grass Valley gave me some coax and uh, in, a, in bundles, and it had been removed from service. Um, I cut off the ends, uh, looked at the dielectric, put on uh, good quality PL259 silver plated Teflon, and um, I've now, for the first time, measured the loss, and the cables look to be really good, uh, even at 400 megahertz, because I would expect if the cable has any kind of a problem, once you get to 400 megahertz, it's really going to stand out. And uh, they appear to be good. Okay, so as the loss in the coax goes up, the SWR goes down.
Now, if it's had water in a specific spot in the coax, it may actually cause the SWR to go up. But in general, if the cable has been saturated with water or it's leaked in, it um, it will have uh, a lower SWR, not a higher SWR, because the losses go up again as that pulse goes out to the antenna and comes back. It's diminished. The reflected power is diminished, um, assuming common mode currents are being reduced. So that's why I disagree with uh, with that article in the on the air magazine. I'm Jim W6LG, your YouTube Elmer in Rockland, California. If you haven't subscribed, uh, please do that. And I'll see you the next time. Thanks for watching. 73.